the fade on, whatever. What's up, friends? Very, very fast cars. Slide that in. Um, this is actually just for show. Um, it, it's a real microphone, I just don't have it plugged in. But it looks cool, so. <laughs> it will be. I just don't have the right cord for now. It came with a cord to go to the computer. And I need a cord that goes to my camera. So, uh, I'm guessing you could figure out what this video will be about, or uh, what car this video will be about. <sighs> McLaren. Six... Sorry, I just saw a 675 LT yesterday. Um, when I was up in the city I used to live in. McLaren 720S. Yeah, this car is a game changer for certainly McLaren and most likely the segment. This is a very impressive car. Uh, I'm gonna send a quick text. My buddy who got to ride in that said 675 LT yesterday was <laughs> just shooting me a message saying, hey, they're going for like half a million. So I'm sending him a, a, uh, a link to a 911 GT3 RS 4.0, 997 generation that just sold for 750,000 to make him feel a little bit better. We go to, um, come on, we go to a few auctions every year and uh, get to see some fun stuff. McLaren 720S, lordy, lordy, lordy. This is an impressive vehicle. Wake up. God bless. There we go. So, they have jumped, leapt forward when it comes to um, everything, really. So, the aesthetic is so different than before. But honestly, it does, it, it still feels like a McLaren. It, I, if someone showed me this car with no badge on it and said, what kind of car is this? I mean, I'm pretty, I might, might be an exception to the rule, but I'd say that's a McLaren. I think a lot of it comes down to these front intakes. The back is, is pure McLaren. Um, I really hope this comes out. I think it will. Um, the headlights, though, if you can call them that, I mean, they are headlights, the headlights are in this area. They call it an eye socket, which is, I, I pretty much hate the word socket, <laughs> so I don't like saying it that much, but a large opening, um, reminiscent of the Zenvo, if uh, anyone knows what that is, the, I think it's a Dutch supercar, if I'm not mistaken. Um, wide opening gives you more, let's go back to the front, more room for, uh, you know, intake assembly, if you will, and uh, reduces the size of the intakes down down low, which I think leads to uh, a, a better look overall. I suppose we're talking about the uh, general design right now, so I guess uh, we'll keep going with that. Uh, this is completely open. You can go through the car. I'm going to have an in-depth video of this later in the year because it will be at the uh, you know Monterey Car Week. I might see it prior to that um, if, if I'm lucky, but... Uh, I will have an in-person video of this come uh, August area, late summer. So uh, bear with me, but today, since I have not had the opportunity to see one in person, I think there's two in the United States. They were at the Amelia Island uh, concourse this last weekend. Sorry, I couldn't make it. Maybe next year. It'd be nice to go to two concourse every year. Let's move to the back. Well, sorry. Goes through there, just incredible amounts of aerodynamic efficiency going on. Um, all these intakes. I don't actually have the um, uh, exact information of the intakes on the hood, which we get a better view from here. This little area there. Uh, I apologize, I can't zoom in on this camera at the moment. But uh, you know, the camera here for the track um, telemetry pack that I believe is an option, as well as probably the parking. Uh, cameras. I believe that, that that works for that as well. You can see a little bit, a little taste of where this car gets all its air. Because if you look at the side, and there's no damn intake. What the hell? How does this, jumping forward a bit, but 4 liter twin turbo V8 get enough air? Um, so we do have a small intake right here, really well integrated. 
really well, because right at the bottom there, we'll probably have a, a closer view of that. And the back, I think we'll have to come back to this picture, because it is just, I think it's the best view of the car for sure. I think the whole car is very cool, and it really integrated a nice um, design language reminiscent a bit of Pagani Huayra, which um, there's worse cars to emulate, I would say. There's certainly worse cars to emulate. This will not show up on, I guarantee, on this picture, but brand new carbon structure, I believe called Monocell 2, Monocell 2, and that incorporates a roof spine. So before it was just the tub was, and I believe it was two pieces, if I am not mistaken, it could have just been one piece, about 170 pounds, I want to say, for the essentially entire chassis, which is un unbelievable. And they've reduced weight on this, and it also has that roof uh, assembly, so the doors open. You'll see how the doors open later. And um, what that option gave them, and this, of course with carbon, you can choose precisely where, how, and um, you know the structure f is formed to have precise outcomes when it comes to stiffness in wherever you want it. Uh, wherever and however, it, the options when it comes to carbon is just essentially endless. So what that my point is, is they were able to open up what I would consider the C-pillar and put glass in there. So the visibility in this car is on another level. It's very cool. And I'm a huge proponent of visibility. Um, you know, it's nice to see the things around you, um, whether they're beautiful or whether they're treacherous. <laughs> you know, having that kind of... 360 degree uh, visibility is incredible, especially when this thing, if this becomes a race car, on a side note, of course, the 650S GT3 is the race car of choice for McLaren uh, when it comes to professional GT racing. Um, there's no way this can do that. This is now in, this is Aventador area. So the 570, perhaps its replacement, maybe the 650S will last another year. The GT3, you know, category, it's going to have to be replaced by a 570 GT3. What could possibly happen, you know, if, you know, sticking on this subject for a little bit, is, you know, the MP412C came out in, what, 2011? Its update was the 650S, mid-cycle refresh, if you will. And then, you know, the GT3 non-race version, you know, like the Rook, like the Porsche GT3, was the 675 LT. LT kind of designates that this is the sportiest version. We won't get into the low, low production like the HS and stuff, uh, the 688. But perhaps there'll be, within the year, a update, mid-cycle update, because they've already had the GT, the 570S, the GT, 570 GT, and there'll be a Spider coming out soon. So maybe with the Spider, the convertible version of the 570, it'll jump to perhaps 600, you know, the 600S, which would be kind of cool, you know, maybe 620S, but I like the nice round 600. Um, and that will have to become the GT3 car. Okay, so I did digress. I do despise that... Um, word. <laughs> it's overused so much, but I certainly went off topic a bit. So here, this is a great view of the car. Nice lighting to get the, the full picture going on here, or a lot of it. Um, intakes, low, low temperature intakes going on up here, so low temperature radiators are behind those. Uh, those most likely evacuate underneath the car, giving uh, hopefully some benefits to under, underbody aero performance. Um, I'm wondering what the options are when it comes to roof colors and specification. I know there's one that we've seen, perhaps in this slideshow, um, with a silver a silver car with a silver um, little mark around the window. Kind of cool. And you get the, a little bit better view of this intake assembly. I do suspect that goes to radiators. It could just be for brake cooling. McLaren, you know, drop the, drop the info. It's just a massive leap forward. No one could have expected this in 2011, that the replacement would be this drastic. What are the original car? 562 horsepower. We went from 562 
and the MP4-12C, which ended up, be, ended up becoming, called, becoming called the 12C, and then in turn the 650S. But the original car had 562 horsepower just over five years ago, and that was their first car, which was, you know, lauded as essentially amazing. It had its quirks and its, um, you know, they ironed those out, they're ironing those out, and this is... Thank God they unveiled this, because their Formula One team blows ass right now. Let's not get into that, though. Whole other topic. <laughs> there, you can see how the doors open. They have, you know, the more or less, I think you could say, dihedral doors. Uh, I think there's another view. Yeah, look at that. That was one of the first images to leak. But yeah, the, the door essentially goes into the roof, making getting in and out of the car just so much easier. You can just kind of sit in and then plop right down. And... Uh, I can only imagine you, you can use all this assembly to kind of ease yourself into the car. So for all you old folks, you know, picking up a 720S might not be a bad option. Um, the gentleman we met, I didn't meet him, my friend met him, uh, that had the 675 LT, he will most likely be selling it within a year to pick up his 720S. And uh, we'll probably pocket a few dollars <laughs> uh, to be rich and famous and wealthy. Maybe not even famous. Keep it low-key. Um, we have, I, I don't even remember, I think they're saying this car is double the error efficiency of the previous generation car, which explains its 212 mile per hour top speed. Unbelievable. Beautiful little taillights, I love them, they're just, just right in between the, like, P1, which is really drastic, dramatic, which looks cool, don't get me wrong, I like the P1 taillights, and the, um, you know, just the kind of slits that were on the, the previous, you know, 650S, 675 LT, just a nice, subtle, really elegant taillight assembly, massive amounts of uh, ventilation going on back here, because this 4 liter V8 makes, okay, well bear with me, 720 horsepower, PS, um, what I've noticed, someone can, you know, perhaps break this down a little better for me, uh, for us. There's different ways to measure it, you know, different um, standards throughout the world. But um, it generally sounds to me like, or seems to me over the years, that um, this, the PS correlates to what the Americans use for horsepower. So 720S should correlate beautifully in the United States to 720 horsepower. And... Pretty sure it has 560 pound feet of torque. This will obliterate an Aventador S. This is not even funny. Uh, but great, why not? And for probably $150,000 less than the Aventador S. Okay, so 4 liter V8, let's see what else we got here. Dead center on the back. Look at the size of this diffuser. I mean, it's literally to the center line of the wheel. It's huge. Huge. Um, active arrow, of course. The rear wing here has to be another 10, 15% larger than the, the 675 LT width-wise. Um, because, of course, the 675 has a long tail. Hence the LT. Um, I think it's like 100 millimeters uh, more deeper than the regular 650S. Great picture there, showing those uh, headlights slash intakes. These are matrix LEDs. I didn't think matrix LEDs were illegal in the United States. Um, perhaps how they managed to manage them. They circumvented those rules. I hope that we get them because they're supposed to be just impeccable, high quality lights. We have the stupidest laws in the US limiting how bright headlights can be, even though technology these days makes it so you it will not shine the light on an oncoming car, whatever. <sighs> Someday they'll get their head out of their ass. There's a good look at the um, headlight slash intake assembly. Um, I have to say I'm not a huge, huge fan of this um, DRL. It's not terrible. It's kind of cool. It's like a, it's like a beam. So you can like put your hand behind it. You can see actually the one single kind of radiator grill that goes across behind it here. So that's kind of cool. And I suspect it is also the turn signal. Uh, that would make complete sense because this is only one, two, three, four, five, and six LED projectors. 
So that's cool. And of course, this can go in and then out, so you're getting a nice flow of the air. It's not getting trapped, which would of course increase drag. And the beautiful wheels, this is actually the background on my cell phone right now, because as everyone who has an iPhone knows, it sucks to get a background on it because it automatically zooms in. So when you come across a picture in this you know, portrait lens, portrait mode, bit vertical, narrow, you say, oh, well, that's my new background because it's the only one that'll look good. Here we go with the silver car um, and a great view of what we're talking about with the intakes. So the door is essentially a double layer door and you have the inner, you know, door and then the carbon, I think it's a carbon door, should be. Um, you know, a layer out here, you, you reach in and that's where the, t the door handle is. Love that. I love hidden integrated door handles. And then this is all the intake assembly and it goes down. I mean, it, it goes down and this engine just gulps in the air. And a cool, I gotta say, it's kinda cool. Um, it has a, a lit up engine bay. A little gimmicky, but fuck it. You have a 700 horsepower McLaren. You can have a red light in your engine bay. It's not a Supra. Not that I don't like Supras. Uh, so there's the silver. Um, this probably, probably doesn't come out very well, but it has just like a, almost a pinstripe going on on the A pillar to C pillar um, kind of swoosh line there. Beautiful wheel design. I'm a fan of those. And uh, yeah, some darker pictures. There's a good light picture. And that shows the intakes because you're at a perfect angle to kind of see how deep in those uh, side intakes go. Uh, it's it's mighty impressive. Uh, there's some dog ears right here. Get back in your bed. Go. And uh, hey, my buddy just texted me back saying, wow, yes. it's three quarter million dollar Porsche. Yep, so that's that. Um, seven speed dual clutch transmission, of course. Uh, I don't know who builds their transmission. I understand Ricardo builds the engine, um, engine manufacturer, transmission manufacturer. They're, they're pretty integrated to the supercar scene. They make the transmission in the Huayra. Um, they will make the transmission in the, what's now called Aston Martin Valkyrie. But um, with the, the tie up with the Red Bull race team. These are some good pictures actually. God, look at how wide that mofo is. What? <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't be a good ba bad background on my phone either. I think I like the other wheels better though. There's the wing. You can see how large it is. Look at that section. I mean, just tons of carbon fiber. This car weighs well under 1,400 kilograms dry. It weighs well under 3,200 pounds with full fluids. Fluids meaning, you know, air conditioning fluid, you know, refrigerant, oil, the oil for the brakes, the oil for the engine, um, oil, I think that, I think those are the only two oils. Yeah, and uh, well, there's probably some other pneumatic fluid going on in the car, but this thing is powered by pneumatics, so fluid for that, and that should include a full tank of gas. 720 horsepower, Let's just divide, let's just say 700 because it's easy math. Because then it gives us a, a little bit of leeway. So we'll say 3100 divided by 700 equals 4.43 pounds per horsepower. That is absurd. That is j almost half of a Porsche 911 Carrera. Too much. There's the engine. Look at that fucker. <laughs> uh, look at these exhaust manifolds, which I suspect that's what those are. It only makes sense to me. Um, yeah, now a little increase in displacement, 4.0 liters. Um, a great little cutaway picture there. So you can see the, uh, the chassis inside here. Um, it kind of dead ends, which is this is where the chassis ends, of course, but there's going to be what I suspect are either aluminum or steel crash structures that are bolted to this, and it gives it like a place for you know body panels to be mounted as well. Um, the only body panel that would be kind of connected to the chassis is really the doors, and then the other things need kind of a 
some type of structure to be mounted on. Uh, this is showing what I suspect is the interconnected suspension because like the 650, 675, um, even the original and the 12C, um, it'll have what is generally referred to as a hydraulic or a, yeah, hydraulic anti-roll bars. It doesn't have anti-roll bars. So the articulation of these wheels is immense. And that's why people say these McLarens ride so well. The 570 line has anti-roll bars, a little bit simpler suspension design, which I drove and it was, sorry to make random noises, but it was very smooth and picked up bumps. I was driving on a nice road in Carmel, so I can't really say too much, but it definitely put the power down well. But this has the next generation of interconnected suspension and uh, should ride better. Clarkson said the 12C rode like a Rolls Royce. And I don't, I, it doesn't, won't surprise me. Oh, that's right, the interior. I mean, obviously it has an interior, but the coolest part of the interior, let's see if we can jump to it. Uh, that picture doesn't want to work. Shnikes. Let's see what's going on here. I just want to jump to this. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> check this out. So we have the gauges, just a screen. Eh, I mean, that's where we're at today these days, and it saves weight, so why not? Um, it's a mobile screen, and when you don't need all this hoo-ha on the screen, uh, because who this day and age cares about the temperatures in their engine? Honestly, you buy a $400,000 McLaren because you expect it to work. You don't need to know this, the temperatures. So it tucks away and becomes essentially like a, you know, a nice, somewhat fancy. I hope that's, I hope you can see that. I, I apologize if you can't, but um, gear, tachometer to what is, looks to me like an 8,000 RPM red line, speed, and uh, green, red, blue, blue will mean you're at, you know, that 76, 7,800 RPM area, shift, motherfucker. It's really cool. It's really freaking cool. Look at that cockpit. Look at that steering wheel. I love the simplicity of their steering wheel. Uh, we have what I suspect is the um, lift system on the right here. Um, I've seen Shmi's videos, Shmi 150 with his McLaren. I think that's where it, it's located. Just a great cockpit. You have the two vents. This is actually a vent, if I'm not mistaken, and would essentially be the vent for the passenger, because they have one, but really hidden. Nice kind of amalgam of the 650 and the P1 interior. Um, transmission controls there, drive, neutral, reverse, hazard lights, start engine. Uh, I think this is raised slightly, so it's a little more in view. And then this is the uh, dynamic control panel. They have a special name for it. Sorry, I'm forgetting what it is, but yeah, it's like right there. Boom. Okay. Well, I, I want sport. I want new, uh, you know, like normal road, road use. Any other good views? The seats. Phew. This gives you a view. You can see, uh, well, it gives me a view. I hope it gives you a view. How much glass there is. Glass. Glass on the roof. Um, you know, B pillar, if you will. And then rear quarter glass. And then there's the hatch glass. And then the, the opening in that, uh, you can see it there. Yeah, for sure. The opening in that um, C pillar, it's unbelievable. It's so cool. I, I really hope I can drive this later this year. I would kill to drive this car. I wouldn't kill anything. I'm vegan, so I ideally won't kill anything. Here's some pics at the auto show. Uh, this is car scoops, so they, they took some great pics. Oh, I can't wait to see it in person. To, to, my buddy who I was talking to rode in the 675, you know. He, we want to see it in person to make final judgments, but I do like the video or the the views I've seen so far. And that's it. Um, that's all I really have to say. We have a new McLaren, 720 horsepower, the uh, all conquering 720s. Lottie, Lottie, what is the world coming to? It's so damn drivable. All right, well I got to get up to turn off this camera, but. Uh, Thanks, guys. Till next time, Barry out. Peace.